Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Bud Light's Camera Action. This week, Anthony and I decided to record early in the week, and uh, we also went off the beaten path and did sort of an indie movie. Uh, this week, we did Jason Bateman's Bad Words, and for the first time, we both agreed on, you know, whether or not we like this movie. Um, stay tuned for uh, more episodes to come, and uh, let's just get into it. Which kid's yours? Mine's, Buddy, uh, no, thank you. What's that? Just chat. I'm all sad. You must be our host for today. No, I'm the winner. I was late. A-B-S-Q-U-A-T-U-L-A-T-E. That's correct. Yes. Who's next? The spelling bee is meant for kids. Rule number 24, the speller must not have passed beyond the eighth grade on or before February 1st. As you can see there, I have not passed the eighth grade. Not ever. Hi, I'm J. Tony Chopra. What's your name? Spin it around. What was your winning word? If you don't sit on that seat, I'm going to tell the captain that your bag's ticking. Let's go. Let's start. All right. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, back to uh, Bud Light's Camera Action. Where um, we actually, Anthony, we did something that I thought that we would never do this week. And uh, that was see a movie that I enjoyed. Yeah, I, I was very surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised. This was a movie that actually made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, it also kept me in, interested in the plot line. Yep. I wanted to, to see what happens at the end. Mm -hmm. And it had a romance that was more romantic and less creepy than last week's movie. I th yeah, honestly, I think the uh, all of the character interactions were better than uh, Christian Grey and um, Anastasia. I think they were all better. And this is yeah, this is this one. is talking about a forty-year-old white man and a ten-year-old Indian kid as well. Like their relationship was better than those two. They had better on-screen chemistry than those two idiots. Yeah, last week, for <laughs> which, sure. which is amazing. But um, <laughs> so, all right. So this week we watched uh, a great comedy called Bad Words. Uh, Bad Words. You you might not have heard of it. Yeah, uh, it's Jason Bateman's uh, director debut. Yes. Yep. I saw that too. Uh, and it was it was a delight. Actually, it was it was absolutely it follows, hilarious. Uh, it stars Bateman himself. Yes, so he's directing himself as a forty-year-old man trying to win the Golden Quills spelling bee. Right. You heard that correctly. Yes, he is competing against uh, ten and eleven-year-olds in a spelling bee, um, and he is able to do this because he dropped out of school. And never graduated the eighth grade, so he is technically eligible. Yeah, um, which is a funny little loophole. Um, he knows all the rules too. Yes, that was pretty funny. First yeah, scene. well, he's a genius. You find out in this that yeah. he is a genius. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was—I uh, mean, it was a simple plot. I mean, it wasn't—you know—they weren't reinventing the wheel. But, uh, but at least there was there was rising action and a climax at this. Point. Absolutely, there was conflict. Which we haven't we haven't seen in a while. No, there was there was a <laughs> lot of conflict between um, Guy and uh, what, Chitara or whatever his name is. Yeah, Guy and Chitara. Ch Guy being Chitani, Chitanya, I think it was Chitara. Chitara. Chitari? Yeah, Chitara Atari. from uh, Atari. from Thundercats. <laughs> Chitara. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, uh, Guy, who is uh, Jason Bateman, um, he is going to enter this for reasons that you don't you don't understand until later. I mean, it's not too much of a surprise once you start meeting other characters, but um, he's being helped by uh, um, she's married to uh, Brennan's Adam brother in yeah, uh, Adam Scott. In, yes. Uh, in Step Brothers. In Step Brothers. She, she's the woman that wants to uh, be with Dale. Yes, right. And loves Dale. Um, uh, you all know her. She's been in all these comedies. Yeah, what's, her name is like Catherine Hahn, I believe. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Let me look. Let me, let me no, it is. It is. 
It is. Okay. You don't need to look. Um, so basically, Guy is the biggest dick ever. He is just such an asshole. He ends up winning his regional spelling bee and uh, gets on a plane, and he is now going to the national what, Golden Quill, you said, right? Yeah, it's Golden Quill. Yeah. So um, this is where we meet our uh, our little Indian friend, uh, Chitara, and he is so funny. I love this kid. <laughs> I love this kid so much. Um. He's like the – he is just the most innocent little kid ever and uh, Jason Bateman wants nothing to do with him. But, uh, you know, he's asking him words uh, – like things like what word did you win uh, your regional on and, you know, all this stuff. And d- do you remember his uh, his answer? Uh, auto fellatio. Auto, yes. He was saying that – Auto fellatio. Yes. And, he, and the kid says – He's never heard that word before. But the kid being like very smart and, um, you know, good at, you know, the whole uh, breaking down words and everything, he starts trying to break it down. And he's like, auto, that means self and fillet. I believe like, you know, fellatio that comes from the core word that means to suck. And, (laughs) And he just can't put it together. And it is, I mean, immediately it's, it's just hilarious. These two going back and forth. When he asks him what his favorite word is, that's pretty funny. That's a hilarious question. I'm going to start asking people that. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, and this is where, like, the gorilla in the desert thing comes up, right? No, that's later on in the hotel. Oh, oh, I thought that was this part. No, not on the plane. He, he ends up turning around. He tells him to turn around before he tells the, the pilot that his ba- bag is ticking. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> right, so um, then... Uh, then the two of them meet again in, uh, in the hotel. Yeah, that's where the gorilla, the gorilla. Right. And, uh, he asks him like, if you had, uh, if you were, if you, he still wants to know what his favorite word is. And he's saying like, if you met a gorilla and you were stranded in the desert and the gorilla came out and pointed a gun at you and said, what was your favorite word? What would it be? And. And, and like the dialogue at that point with them going back and forth is so funny. Yeah, it's it, really good. Uh, he tells him he's gonna kick sand in the gorilla's face. Yeah, and then and, and then uh, track him down and put the gun in his mouth. Yeah. So he he is just threatening a ten year old. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up actually. Um, when you get to the granular level of him just threatening a ten year old, but it's pretty funny because like it's funny stuff that you could say to anyone, you know, like. Oh, yeah. No, no, I mean, like, the threats were hilarious. Um, but before then, he meets with the the woman who's in charge of yes. the spelling bee. And uh, she, like, threatens him and says that she was a champion in 1973. And she's been, she's been serving the spelling bee ever since. And that he will not make a mockery of the spelling bee. And she's got a nice surprise for him. And guess what it is? Uh, his room yes. at the hotel. Yes, he is sleeping in the storage closet. Yeah, well, uh, with just just a mattress in yeah. the storage closet. Only a cot, and uh, but Chitara is staying on the same floor and is staying alone because his father is trying to teach him responsibility. Yes. Um. So now Chitara wants to be friends because he has no friends his only friend is his binder named todd yeah 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 he has a word studying binder because he thought learning how to spell words would make him cool and uh he named the binder todd um where do you think he got todd from i have no idea i thought that was hilarious though it's written on the side (laughs) of the binder yeah and uh todd todd is actually a main character later on in the movie too (laughs) And I actually felt bad about what happens to Todd later. I didn't feel bad about there it. Was, there was real struggle. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. But that part was sad yeah, with yeah. Chitara. It wasn't, it, was, it wasn't that sad. <laughs> yes, it was. it was. It was comedically sad. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you felt for the kid. He's a 10-year-old Indian kid. You feel bad for him. Yeah, true, true, true. Um, so. so, like, the two of them, like, Chitara really wants to be friends with a uh, guy and um he eventually he invites him over 
to his room because he you know he says he's staying there alone. And um, which is creepy, dude. I I wouldn't go to a ten year old's room. Yeah, I know. I agree. But you know how he gets him over there. He tells him he has a mini bar. Right. So very important. Yeah. So uh, he goes over there to drink, and um, Chitaras like is saying that he uh, guy curses too much, and and you know all that, and he finally he gets Chitara to say motherfucker. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, which was really funny. And, um, you know, basically he just passes out in his, in his room. Yeah. That's, uh, again, creepy. Right. But, yeah. But not as creepy as Christian Grey so far. So we're good. Yeah. No, that's true. <clears throat> it's true. So, so anyway, after he raids this kid's mini bar, uh, it's the first day of the tournament. Right. Yeah. Well, after uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, first of all, though, he leaves because he has no bathroom. Oh, yeah. Um, he decides to leave a bag of shit on on the front desk. Yeah, because they wouldn't move him. Yeah. Which is actually hilarious. Like, yeah, that was really good. I don't know. If someone, if someone ever did that to me, I don't know how I would react in that situation. Well, I mean, you did work at a front desk. I can't believe this hasn't happened to you. I, did. I, I can't believe it hasn't. I cannot believe how many times I've told people that we were sold out and I couldn't move their room that they didn't leave a piece of shit on my on the desk. I would. That would be the move. That, that would be the move. Yeah. And then I'd have you arrested. All right. Fine. Fair enough. Um, so, so it's the first day of the tournament and uh, I uh, – Guy psychs out a little Chinese kid in the first the first round. Yeah, but we need to set up the way he does it because we also left out that Guy is having oh, yeah. sex with uh, Catherine Han. Yes, even yeah, yeah, the woman who was supposed to be interviewing him. Yes, I don't know, and I don't I don't understand what she's interviewing him for. Is it a? It's, it's like it's a, like a really good story. She's like got the. The she, story. Yeah, she's a, on I him. guess she's like a writer for the newspaper or something. Yeah, she's a journalist. Yeah. And like, of course that's a big story of a 40-year-old dude going for a, a, the spelling oh, bee. No, definitely. I would wa- I would read that story. That's a career that's a career yeah. changing story. For sure, for sure. So um go ahead, explain the uh psych out on the uh the chubby Asian kid. <laughs> well, yeah, well he first he has sex with Kat, uh Catherine Han. Catherine Han. Catherine Han. Yeah. Which is hilarious sex scene by the way oh don't look at my eyes don't look at me yes yeah she does not want him to look at her and there was more spark there than there was all of 50 shades of gray let me tell you and it like honestly for a girl that like wouldn't let him look at her in the face it was somehow less awkward than yeah the 50 shades of gray it was funny it was pretty fun it was pretty funny so uh they do that she leaves she leaves his, her underwear in his closet room. Yes. Okay. So then he, he brings it uh, to the first round of the tournament, and <laughs> he tells the Asian kid. Who, the Asian that, kid is like the front runner to win. Yeah, the Asian kid's the front runner to win. He tells the Asian kid that <laughs> um, he gives him, the Asian kid, the, the panties, and says, oh, uh, after this, like, give them back to your mom. Like, she came over last night. Yeah, we had <laughs> sex. He says uh, he was like, she held me afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, wishes him good luck on <laughs> during the divorce. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he look the little Chinese kid go, is up next, and he's looking at his parents, and he sees guy smoking a cigarette with her yeah. in his like in his, his imagination. Vision, and he, and he freaks out and misspells the word. Oh. He's the first one eliminated. And how about the word meaning uh, – uh, oh. the word that he had to spell, uh, the definition was like wandering around at night. Yeah, wandering around and, uh, <laughs> and like when they used it in a sentence, it was like uh, the cat kept everybody up because the she alley, was, The alley cat. Yeah. But I forget what the word is but like the she was – um, she was up all night howling with her many suitors. <laughs> it was just, it was just so yeah, she was, like she was fitting. On the fence. Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. It was really well done. Hilarious, great comedy right there. Yeah, that, that is 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you write comedy. Yeah, you're gonna get uh, me every keep time. It smart. Keep it, keep it hilarious. Um, so the front runner is now eliminated. First one out, and uh, Bateman and Shatari make it through. Yes. So now and that's the first round. Now the two of them. Uh, Guy is very reluctant. He does, he wants nothing to do with Chitara. But after this first round, he kind of gives in, and they kind of start becoming friends. They go out and have dinner together. Yeah. Where, yeah, at the, the, hotel bar, the hotel restaurant. Yeah, where one of the moms of another speller kind of gives Guy some shit because the parents oh. are so angry that Guy is doing this. The parents are all so – yeah. Well, the, at the first scene, the first parents at the regional, like, they throw shit at him. Oh, yeah, they chase him out him, after he wins. They're running him out of the gym. Yeah. Um, but the parents are all taking this so seriously, and it kind of reminded me – have you ever seen the movie Best in Show? Oh, with the dogs. With the dogs? Yes. Yeah, how they, like, take – how it's like they take the dog show so seriously. Oh, yeah. Like, in a, in a comedic way. Right. And it was kind of like how these people take the spelling bee so seriously. It it was ludicrous, dude. They they I mean they were seriously so, crazy. These parents are like rioting. This one woman comes up to him and <laughs> he, he calls what did he he called their son a, a cocksucker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> said that her vagina looked like an elephant trunk. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> yeah, it's uh pretty hilarious. Um, but that comes back later, so that's why it that's does funny. come back later, right? Um, so now Guy and Chitara kind of, you know, want to go out and have some fun. So there's like a montage of them going out and just causing destruction. And uh, Guy says to him like right before, like I'm gonna slaughter you like the sacred cow. That <laughs> <laughs> <was> so funny. <laughs> 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 the, the Indian jokes he makes are really funny. Oh um, yeah, because he, he starts calling him Slum Dog. Slum Dog and uh, he, <laughs> yeah, Slum Dog and Gandhi. Yeah, are the two the two big ones. So uh, uh, he gets like there, there's like a montage there, like going around to like cause some destruction. Um, the funniest one guy like gra- funniest, well the cat thing he, that they did I think the yeah. ketchup okay well yeah I was gonna, I was gonna, gonna say yeah lobster. Well, I was going to say he grabs a bunch of ketchup, which comes back later as well. A lot of yes. this movie was setting up for later jokes, which I liked. That's true. Yeah, that's why it, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so... it wasn't, like, dumb. Yeah, so they, got, they get a bunch of ketchup, and uh, they lay Chitara down in front of a, uh, a car, and they pretend that, that some guy hit him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guy, like, gets out of his car and is, like, freaking out. And he's just – guy is just dragging Chitara around like he's a dead body. <laughs> it is um, it is hilarious. Yeah. And uh, did, then go ahead. You could say your favorite one. Or didn't know what's, him. What's up? When, did, when he did that prank, did it make it – did Jason Bateman make it seem like he was the one that hit him? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it made okay. it made it seem like he just hit some kid, and then he was asking the guy to, for help. Yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> go ahead and say your favorite one. That's hilarious. Um, they go into the grocery store, and they get they go to the the tank of you know how like in the grocery store they have a tank of lobsters, yeah, live lobsters of course. that you can get. So they get a they get a lobster. And they bring it to a restaurant's bathroom and put it in the toilet. And you just see this guy go in there and he can't. Was it, was it on his dick or on his ass? He, no, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was, it was his balls. The lobster. Yeah. The lo- I think it was like – His it, balls? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like I would never think to do that with a lobster, but n- no, and that is that is I mean that was so funny though. But uh, so now they're they're just sitting there having some fun, uh, talking about everything that they just did, and uh, for some reason uh, Chitara keeps calling uh, soda soda pop, like he was inviting him over before, like. Oh, let's go have some soda pop. You can come drink soda pop in my room. <laughs> but he goes, uh, guy tells him, he's like, 
I would just start saying soda, otherwise you're going to get raped. <laughs> <laughs> like, the one-liners in this movie were hilarious. They were. And, like, you never saw them coming either. Like, when would you ever think that he was going to say that to him? No, well, I know. soda pop. Yeah, I know. And then, and then this might be the funniest part of the movie. When they start talking about... This is when, like, you find out that Chitara doesn't have any friends... And uh, Guy's kind of like joking around with him and he's like, oh, I'm sure you, you kill it with the ladies though. And he's like, no, I don't have a girlfriend. But when I do get a girlfriend, I'm going to make sure she has nipples. <laughs> because <laughs> for whatever reason, this kid doesn't think that all girls have nipples. Yeah, he, does. he only thinks that girls with, that have nipples poking out of their shirts have nipples everyone else doesn't yeah and i just it was it was just such like easy humor that was like killing me yeah i couldn't stop laughing it at funny. it it was so it was so funny so he, he so uh now guy has to show chitari that you know girls have nipples yeah so his way of doing it is he decides to buy a hooker for the kid to get him the flasher for t- 10 seconds. <laughs> and uh, uh, she does. And then you, uh, y- I mean, his face is hilarious when it's happening. Yeah. Do you think that he actually is looking at the, those boobs? They actually like showed a 10 year old or do you think they, that was some movie magic? I don't, I don't know. Did you ever see them in the same I don't think so. I, yeah, that I can't. Makes me think like I don't think he actually. Saw, he was, that's some good acting then. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm trying to. I can't remember. Ah, I don't know, man. That's a good question that's like though. Really, it's really good acting. So so far, a, um, a ten year old has out acted every single actor that we've had on one of these movies. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's not even close. This kid is, was definitely the best actor out of anyone we've done yet, <laughs> except Nick Cage. Yeah. Um. Oh, what about the part where they said that uh, they were saying that the kid was 16, but he had like glandular problems, like Gary <laughs> Coleman, and yeah, that's why he was so small. Once you leave, like good luck with your glands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, so then they go. Oh, well, the kid has the time of his life. Well, best, wait, wait, wait. Time of his life. Also, go back to you. Got to go back to the part where um, uh, he gives her. Uh, like he only gives her 10 bucks and he doesn't tip her and oh, yeah. um and he's like oh i was just kidding like i i actually have more money let's go get some ice cream and the kid goes fuck the ice cream how much to touch them <laughs> and, <laughs> so they go and try to figure that out which is a scene you don't see which but i mean i'm sure it would have been hilarious yeah but the, that you get a little bit of it when they are walking back to the room that he said like I don't oh. care how old you are, you have to hold. You have to at least have one dollar on you. Yeah, you should. You should carry a little a money dollar, with you. They were a dollar short of the yeah. uh, fee. <laughs> uh, and oh, also, I guess I guess we should just hit on the the um the toy car too. He asks. Oh yeah. He asks like you know what was uh, guy's favorite toy growing up because you know they try to get you know close with each other and. Um, like they're developing like a, a relationship yeah. with, for it's these two typical, characters, you know, like very simple character development. That yeah. But, um, for some reason movies don't really go into, no, they're, I mean, they're trying to make you feel bad for Chitara because he says like, he doesn't have any friends and he's like, yeah. toys are great to have when you don't have anybody to play with. So you feel bad for him. And, um, you know, the, he has like this toy car that he stole in, from the grocery store, which I thought was great. And, um, he, uh, guy tells him that, like, his favorite, um, toy was, um, a cop car that he had. Yeah. Um, when he was little. And that comes back later in the very end. Um, which was cool because it shows you that, you know, they're friends. But, uh, Mm -hmm. so now we are on. Is this the last day of the tournament? No, it's the second to last day, right? No, it was, a, it was yeah, second to last day. Yeah, there's one more day after yeah, this. Yeah, there was three rounds. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, so three days. Now, um, Chitara comes up to Guy on the bus over to the tournament, and uh, he gives him the toy car, and uh, basically, oh, he tells him, I'm going to bust your nut. He goes, I'm still totally going to bust your nut, even though we're friends. He keeps saying that. He thinks that's, like, to kick his ass. Yeah, he thinks that that's, like, the biggest insult he could ever have, um, which was hilarious. Uh, then, uh, what do we, what, what happened? Oh, the director, the female director. Yeah, now. second round. So this is, she, yes. she is going to try to screw guy over because she doesn't want him to win. She said that she would retire if, uh, guy say, makes it to the finals. If he, if he makes, to, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now, so she, so she is, is fixed now. The words. Yes. She is deliberately going through a dictionary and setting it up so that guy is going to get the hardest words in the in the predetermined uh it's supposed to be a random list of words to spell yeah so you know who is an underrated character uh the pronunciation yes i was just gonna say the, i couldn't think of what to call him yeah the guy who was like kind of hosting it well not hosting yeah. it i know he's reading the words to the kids yeah he was funny so um so now that ketchup that we had from earlier in the movie, that comes back into play. Yeah, this is this is really this is kind of fucked up. Too. This is so messed up. <laughs> Go ahead, you you, so you start. In this round, in this round, um, he's he's next to this girl who's like now the next favorite to win, and he oh, was says, she? "Oh, is that like your?" Ha-? Yeah. Okay. And he's just like, and he says. <laughs> Oh, is that your hair clip down there? And she, she's like, "Oh, like where?" And like, like leans up to like try to see if it was her hair clip. And he puts the ketchup on her seat. Yeah. And when she sits back down, he's he he tell he starts talking about how uh, she's a woman now. Yeah, he's like, "I and saw your I saw your womanhood." Her, uh, when you I saw your woman. Yeah, yeah, when you when like, you bent you over, I saw that? your womanhood. Like it's time to celebrate and whatever. So basically, this girl just has a giant red spot in her pants, and he's now telling her that she got her first period, which is so messed yeah. up. <laughs> so fucked up. Because still, they're like eleven year olds. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so this girl is so mortified. She can't even. Yes, she can't won't even stand get up. up. On stage. She she gets disqualifies herself. She's out, and the announcers are all just like, "Well, some people can't handle the pressure of the spelling bee." <laughs> yeah, and he's just sitting there. He like starts applauding and like was walking up to do yeah. his word and everything, which was amazing. It, he's such a dick. He's yeah. such a dick. Such an perfect asshole. Um, Which is hilarious because you don't see Bateman like that in no, many movies. I, Bateman seems like a pretty cool guy. He um he's usually the the misunderstood, yeah, the, the whiny friend kind of. I mean, obviously, uh, whenever you think of mature. yeah, whenever you think of Bateman, you think of Michael. Yeah, but he was also the same character in Horrible Bosses. Yes. Yep. That's true. Like, yeah, he, he was like the more mature one. Yeah, he's like the mature comic relief type. Yeah, but he's not that here. No, he is far from that. He is a dick. It's and it's amazing. He did it so good. Um. So all right, then now those words that were brought into play start coming up, and you kind of think yes. that maybe he's going to get bounced from the tournament or something because these words are ridiculous. Uh, they were all the longest words in the dictionary. One of them was like, I wrote it down, but I don't, I, I don't even think I can uh, pronounce it. I'll try. Flow, okay. flow, yeah. sin, ouch, in, hill, pill, factation. That's, that's so butchered. You can, you can say it. Flexi nose nose a not nihil filicus cashin. Wait, 
Okay, I got it. Go ahead. Blockchain na sin hillification. Hmm. I I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to Google this. Where? Uh... Fluke na kana hillification. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's I've never heard of it before. It's you know what it means. No. All right, I got I got the definition here. It's a noun. Okay. Okay. The action or habit of estimating something as worthless. Oh, okay. Sure. Which was hilarious. Which was smart, also because that's kind of a theme in the movie. Right. That and Jason Bateman. Yeah, there's another um, word is later. Doing this because he feels worthless. Yeah. Hey, let, let's see if. Hold on, my computer might be able to speak it out. Hold on. Flossy Hold up. Here we go. Ready? Flossy Nalsinilipilification. I'd Okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> but sure. All right. Just well, believe we us. Have our first computer guest. Yeah, believe us <laughs> when we say that no, it is one of the longest guest. words. A surprise guest, Mike Mike's computer this week. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh he's a good guy. Um, then he I sounds pretty boring. Yeah, I agree. But then the next word, I swear to God, I can actually spell the next word. Anti disestablishmentarianism. I learned how to spell this word in fifth grade oh. for a spelling bee. And it like I saw Did it. You win that spelling bee? No, I didn't win the fucking spelling bee. For some reason, though, that was just a word Are that we had to learn bee? how to spell. And, really? uh, yeah, I don't know. I fifth grade teacher. I didn't have to, I didn't have to learn that. I don't know. I think it was just like, because it was, I think, I think that might be like the longest word in like the English language or something. Maybe that's why we yeah, learned it, has it. So it has so many like actual words in it. Like, yeah, right. Spell before. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's like old. the longest, uh, maybe not, but uh, I don't know. Oh, I actually just found out our first word, and uh, that – they claim that that's the longest word. That's hmm. the longest – yeah, the one that we just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the longest word. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Unbelievable. But uh, yeah, so he bangs out these words, and it's not even – now everybody's freaking out because they're like, holy shit, this guy's a genius. Like he's probably going to win this. Yeah, they're like, we can – you, yeah, because they threw everything they that they had. They threw everything that they had, and they said he still won. Yeah, and, uh, they threw uh, they threw headmistress out of uh, out of power. Yeah, yeah, and now the old guy who we haven't brought up yet, he is yeah. the um, what he's like the chairman of the spelling yeah, game. Yeah, he's the chairman, and he was the founder or something. Right. And now he is going to take over control. Mm -hmm. He's also one of the head commentators. Right. Did you notice who the other commentator was? No. That's Melissa McCarthy's husband. Uh, he was the air marshal in Bridesmaids. Oh, yeah. Huh. What a, what a poor guy. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, what an he awful had life! Seventh, seventh lead in this movie. I mean, there's not many characters. Yeah, seven, seven out of ten characters. Even seven. Hmm. Good for him. Good for him. So, um, let's see. Where are we now? Oh, okay. So now this is where the friendship between uh, our two main characters uh, hits hits its. Uh, Rough patch. Yeah, this is all part of uh, story development. Right. There was this take, is this is notes. continuing rising action, and now we're gonna hit yeah. a uh, a big conflict. Yes. So, uh, guy is walking past uh, Chitara's room to give him. I think he's giving him something, right? He's giving him like he's ice cream. Maxim, Maxim magazines. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. He's gonna give him Maxim magazines, and the door is 
this this is slightly ajar. Yeah, this is one of the parts of the movie. I mean, there's very few. I like this movie a lot, but uh, I had a big problem with why the door was open. Yeah, why was the door? It shouldn't have been open. It should have still been closed. That was seriously they wrote in a conflict because th- why would you ever leave your hotel door open like that? Can you even Never. leave hotel doors open? Don't they close automatically? You can. If you ever so slightly leave it ajar, you can leave it open. Okay. Well, I mean, all right, so this door is pretty pretty well open. You can also, you can also take the security latch, you know, that you latch closed. Yeah. Keep it locked. You do it the other way and close the door on it. That keeps it open. Yeah, but this door was, like, open. Like, he, he was looking was inside the door. It open. No, he was looking inside the door, and he could see them. It's because he pushed the door open a little. Well... St- even still, you wouldn't leave that door okay. open. Yeah. So the kids, Chitara's dad was telling him uh, that he wanted him to become friends with Guy so that later on, um, basically he, he would feel bad for him and uh, he would let him win pretty much, right? Yeah. And uh, Guy hears this whole conversation – it was all part of the plan. His dad actually put Shatara up to being his friend. Yeah. So he wouldn't do it. So he wouldn't beat him. So now uh, Guy found this out and he is furious. He's freaking out. Yeah. And uh, now there's going to become like a feud between uh, between these two characters. Well, for, a, prank, a prank war, if you will. Right. And let's let's just reiterate, this is between a 40-year-old man and a 10-year-old Indian boy. <laughs> <laughs> they are now going to fight, pretty much. They're going to go all 12 rounds. Yeah, and, and it's, well, uh, it's pretty they funny. Do they do two rounds. Yeah, it's only two. So basically, <laughs> now what what happens is there is a murder in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is. There is a death in this movie. Yeah, Todd, our beloved spelling book, is unceremoniously burned outside. Out by the pool. Yeah, There's and a little bit of a bonfire. Right, and guy is just standing there giving Chitara the middle finger. And it is fucking hilarious because it's funnier when he when he throws the lighter fluid in. Yes, and he's like a big yeah. fireball. And uh, so Chitara is standing there. Um, he's standing there in his room behind a closed door, screaming for Todd, like like it's like it's his father being killed outside. <laughs> and oh um, my! You said that you were sad at that part. I mean, you gotta be – well, I mean, think about it. He said that he has no friends. His only friend yeah. was Todd. And now this 40-year-old man has just killed his only friend. I guess you're right. If I was 10 and someone took my binder of Pokemon cards – Yeah. Oof, and not to, mention, not to mention, I mean, like, he's kind of screwing him over because now he can't study. Yeah, true. But, I, you know, I mean, whatever. Um – don't worry, Shatara gets him back. Oh, he gets him back, and he gets him back really good. <laughs> so at four in the morning, he sets a, an alarm, and he wakes up, and he calls the police. And he says to him, uh, I just saw a man dragging a teenager <laughs> into his room. And, <laughs> and when they got inside the room, the screaming stopped. <laughs> Which is diabolical. That is, that is so, that's the worst thing that anyone could ever accuse someone of doing. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. So uh, now, like the uh, the coincidence ends up being even funnier. Now, when the police show up and start knocking on the door, and uh, guy answers by saying something like. Uh, He's like, what do you want now, you little bitch, or something like that? <laughs> and uh, the, the cops, resp- they look at each other and they're like, oh my god, he's still got her in there. So they knock again, trying to get in, and uh, he goes, I'm coming. They take it for the other sense of the... Hold your, hold your tits, I'm coming. Yes, hold your tits, I'm coming. 
and they take it to mean something <laughs> totally different than I'm coming to the door, and they kick the door down and completely crush him, and uh, then arrest yeah, and him. And then they beat the shit out of him. Yes, and then they arrest yeah. him. So, uh, you know, Chitara one up him. Late night for Guy. Right. Yeah, because Guy didn't get his Guy didn't get his sleep. He's going to be distracted now for the final round. Yes, and uh, upon uh, Guy getting released from jail, um, our female lead. I forget what her name is in it. Jenny, is it maybe? Yeah, it is Jenny. Oh, nice. Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Wow. That was kind of a guess. Um, Jenny tells Guy that she had uh, his father tracked down and she now knows who Guy's father is. <laughs> Guy's father is the chairman of the spelling bee. So now it all becomes yeah, clear the, the that Guy... Yes, Guy is only doing this as a fuck you to his father who left his mother and was never there for him. Yeah, and this so is, he really wants to tarnish his legacy. Right, and, and this is also the reason that... Over his yeah, this is also the reason that Guy hates Chitara's dad because he's making his son stay in a hotel alone at 10. And he is also uh, really kind of just not there for him. So he yeah. sees himself in Chitara. Um, so basically, uh, we can cut through the uh, the final round because it comes down to Guy and Chitara, yeah. of course. Um, Written in the stars. That yeah, that would happen. Right. So um, basically, what happens is, even though Guy hates Chitara at this point. He still likes him enough where he decides to go up and start uh, spelling the words wrong. Or he spells his word wrong so that Chitara can just, you know, spell one more word and he's going to win it. Uh, That is not the case because Chitara doesn't want to win that way. And once he realizes what's going on, he begins to spell his words wrong on purpose. It this was a pretty good scene because can now we, wait, can we go can we go back to how uh, smart how fun, the uh, the third contestant gets eliminated by missing a p an h in in uh oh yeah Korea. yeah 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 he forgets and you think and you think go, yeah you just broke up you think you that it's because like you're just like sorry you think that it's uh, like, oh my god, I can't believe your initial reaction is, oh my god, I can't believe you, you forgot the H in phobia. This kid's like a, a finalist in the spelling bee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the word was a fear of fatigue. Oh. So he was just like, he was so fatigued from the long day that that's how he forgot the H. Yeah. And, and he was that word. Right. And they say it right after, too. They're like, uh, oh, it's been a long yeah. day. They're so tired or whatever. Oh, that's pretty clever. So this. Very clever, very educational movie. Yeah. But, uh, yes, continue this. So now they're they're intentionally missing words. Yeah, they're going back and forth, trying to spell words wrong so that the other guy will win. And uh, is this the part where that woman comes back into it? Yeah, the woman comes back into it, starts booing him, and then um, she like stands up. A scene, yeah, she and, stands uh, up now, and she goes, "This guy called my yeah, she, my she little angel." Scene. A cocksucker. Yeah. So this is also being filmed live. Oh yeah, way. it's I'm live. I mean, it's time. just like the National Spelling Bee. This is like, yeah, this is now. Well, it's on ESPN like every year. You ever catch it? I've uh, I never watch it. I mean, it's funny. Like the Barstool guys always live tweet it, and I'll go, I'll like follow along I, with them. I think. I think that I'm gonna watch it now because if it's like, it's probably gonna be boring. I'll I'll turn it off after ten minutes. But like. Now I'm like, think this movie. Yeah, you would watch it because of this movie. Yeah, I would watch it because of this movie. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll watch it together. Ooh, that'd be delightful. I think I'd watch um, that with you, man. Anyway, great. We can live tweet it. Maybe we could do a show about it. Um, Possibly. So now, guys, guys, father's getting real embarrassed because, like, this is his show. And now a woman just said cocksucker on live TV. Yeah. 
and is causing a scene, gets dragged out of the room, and he can't believe it. He's pissed. Yeah, so he kind of starts making his way to the stage because uh, Chitara kicks Guy in the dick. <laughs> yeah. And he busted his nut, dude. Yeah, he busted he his nut. He finally did it. And there's a great quote from, from Guy right after that. He goes, uh, he's like laying on the ground and he's like, your guy Gandhi would be really proud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he says it to his parents. <laughs> um, so, um, that, like, the, you know, Guy's dad makes it to the stage, and, um, he makes it to the stage just in time for Chitara to spin around and hit him with a chair. Oh, yeah, chair shot. So yeah. many chair shots. Yeah. Well, the car took a chair shot at the beginning and then a chair shot at the end. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. two chair shots. Two chair shots, quality ones. Yeah, um, those were great. They say that they will not disqualify both of them after like a break. And uh, now we're back. We're right back where we were. Like whoever spells the word right is going to win. So Chitara goes up and he's going to try to spell it wrong again. So Guy has a pretty brilliant idea where he spells the word from his seat and uh, Chitara corrects him. And tells him, no, you forgot another uh, L or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he goes, yeah, it was another L. Yeah, he goes, no, you forgot another L. So because they just want somebody to win and be over with this, they claim that technically Chitara spelt the word right because he corrected Guy. Yeah. So Chitara's the winner. They name him the winner. By the way, the winner got $50,000. Dude. When I all yeah, so all of a sudden, like a big check comes down and it says fifty thousand dollars, and I had the same reaction. I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I had no idea that it was for that much. Yeah, that's a big amount of money for a spelling bee. For a spelling bee, I wonder how much they win in the real one. Yeah, do you think it? uh, It has to be like in scholarship money, though. Like, you can't. They're not going to give a ten-year-old fifty grand. Right? Yeah, that's probably true. I don't know, man. Could you imagine, like, winning the spelling bee at 10 and then, like, you know, you go through high school and shit and you're just like, whatever, and then you, like, turn 18 and you're like, oh, yeah, you get your 50 grand now. I know. Well, you know what? Hold up. I'm looking at the national – I'm looking at the national spelling bee right now. Uh Uh-huh. And the winner wins 30,000. They get a – all right, so it's 30,000 cash. And a spelling bee trophy uh, th- from Marion yeah. Merriam Webster. They win two thousand five hundred in a savings bond and a complete reference library. And from ex- in- ex- Encyclopedia Britannica, one thousand two hundred uh, dollars worth of reference books and shit like that. <laughs> wow! Thanks a lot, Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Yeah, Britannica, like, that, you know why? I bet they used to give out better things, but then Wikipedia came along and really stole their thunder, so. Oh, they're, they're not, poor. Not too, too hot. They're, they're poor as hell. Yeah, they're people shit. Oh, yeah, take our books, please. Right. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I mean, where do we go from here? This, I mean. Uh, that's, it, that's it. Like, well, no, I mean, guy. Chitara wins. She, he, he says that they're they're friends. He splits the money with guy. Yeah. And then, uh, guy, like, writes this letter to his dad saying that, "Hey, man, you're my dad. That's why I did all this." And uh, that's it. He 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 leaves with Chris and Han in hand. Yes. Um. And they exit in an elevator, way more romantically like last than last week's oh, yeah. elevator. And, very true, very true. Uh, and and then, then the final scene: Shatara is getting bullied at school. Right. And, and uh, guy this is, shows up in his cop car. Yeah, and uh, he tells Shatara, he's like, he "Yeah, he's like, the, you know, all that money that you gave me, I bought." two cars in the past month and something else. I forget what the other thing he says is, but, uh, I don't, I forget. 
But uh, so basically, he just uh, he's been living off the twenty five thousand dollars that Chitara gave him, and um, life is going. And then they chase the yeah. yeah they chase the bullies down, and that's it. Like best friends forever. Yeah, ten year old and a forty year old. Yeah, and apparently they both movie. they're both from Ohio. Yeah, they're both from Ohio because in movies you have to suspend disbelief. Correct. And and you know and what I I hope that they're still scene. friends. I think that they are. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, um, there's the movie. So, I we mean, just described this movie in just about the same time as the runtime. It wasn't a very long movie. No, it's a short movie, and I I for one yeah. think that you should all go see it. It's hilarious. Yeah, it really is a good great movie. movie. Um, one. This is an important question. What do you think Guy does for a living? Uh, I actually know what he does for a living. Oh, you do? Yeah, he says it in the beginning. He uh, proofreads. Must... He proofreads warning labels. Really? Yeah, he says it in the very beginning. I must have missed that because the whole time I was wondering. Because when that fifty thousand dollar check came down, I was like, "Is this guy rich? What does he do?" No, I think I think he does all right. You know, he's he's able to get by. Yeah, maybe well, he just doesn't care. He didn't do it for the money. He did it. Yeah, he was trying to fuck his father his over. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I mean, great movie. It's 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 really a good movie. So I would definitely say go see it. Finally, a good movie. Um, should we uh, move into the ratings? Uh, we rate this I think we should do one thing first before the ratings. Here comes the money. Uh, here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little upset that you didn't have that queued up in every mo- uh, every bar we went into this weekend in New York. <laughs> I should have. Uh, I mean, it's it's actually it's on my iTunes now because of this show. <laughs> I have a lot of weird <laughs> stuff on my iTunes now because of this show. But well, we all know that your favorite song is uh, I I love it played fourteen hundred times on your iTunes. No, it's um. Oh, oh fu- take, take me home. Yeah, take me home, which is clearly yeah. a glitch. Like, like you no, can't listen to a song that many times, but um, all right. So, <laughs> Garrido's gross guess. Uh, this was uh, I'll, all right. So it came out in March. Of, I might know this one. Well, it came out in March of last year, and I don't think it was um, widely released in theaters. It it wasn't. This is an indie movie right here. So I'm gonna say fifteen million dollars. Yeah, no. It actually made less than that. Less than 15. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Six million. No, it made more than that. But this is, you know what? I'm only looking at box office, and I don't think it made any money in the box office. That would make sense. Okay. Um, It made 7.8 yeah. box, mo- bo- uh, box office. Um, like two or three weeks, and not widely released. Yeah, that's the. I mean, like, that's really sad that this is this. The best movie we've seen so far has made. Best movie we've seen so far has made the most money. Yeah, dude. It um, oh it yeah it really did not make it. It made seven point eight million dollars. That's how much movie this money has made, or money this movie has made. So. Uh, <laughs> um. How much do you think it was to make, though? You know, like oh, well, it, it definitely didn't make. So it that. probably made. Yeah. It made a good profit. Yeah, sure, definitely. But I mean, like, you know, it's still such a shame that a movie like this just makes no money. And I mean, we watched Fifty Shades of Grey, and in less than a month, that thing has made one hundred and thirty million dollars. Yeah, well, uh, c'est la vie. C'est la vie. Go see the. This movie, make it some more money. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, you can see it on Cinemax. It's on Cinemax now. That's how I watched it. Oh, is it? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, It'll be a cult classic, I think, before it's all said and done. It should be. It definitely should be. Yeah. Um, 
So, all right. It's since, definitely worth a watch. Uh, since, since we're giving it such great reviews, go ahead. Uh, why don't you give it your, your a rating? My rating? Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a 7.4. Okay. Um, uh, IMDB gave it a 6.7, and Rotten Tomatoes was a, a 65. So, okay. I mean... So that's like pretty much the same. Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven. I mean, I I really feel like seven. this was a good, this was a good and I mean, compared to my other numbers that I've given movies, this is this is very high. It's very yeah. I, I feel like we're generously doing this, but like our expectations are so low going into this. But yeah, I mean, compared to other movies, like this is easily the best movie we've ever watched. Yes, correct. So. Um, I mean, it's only fair that this goes to the top of the the top of the pile. Yeah, but it can't be the very top. I mean, we don't. We there's way better movies. There's better comedies to see. Oh yeah, definitely. But I mean, like this is a guy. I, but this, I, is, this is enjoyable popcorn, you know. Like yeah, I've watched this. This is I've watched funny. this multiple times. I think this is actually the second or third time I've watched this movie. Oh, you've seen it more than once. Yes, and it and it held up. It's my first time. It held up. And like, guess what? You know what? Yeah, I, I would watch it again. Yeah, I laughed TV. a lot like the second time through this. So, I mean, there's really nothing I could say bad about this movie. Um, the only thing that would improve this movie, and I know, I know, you know what I'm gonna say. It would probably be like Stanley one Tucci. guy. Yeah, it'd be probably Tucci. Yeah, I think, it, I think it'd be Tucci. Uh, Tucci's take. I, the obvious. I'm not gonna go with the obvious choice. The obvious would obviously Tucci. It, the dad. The guy's father. Yeah. Right, but I guess think what? I'm. I'm putting. Guess who I'm casting Tucci as? I think we might be in the same boat. Go, go ahead. You can say it. I, I'm casting. I'm casting Tucci as Shatari's dad. Wow! Oh my goodness! Would you have him play yeah. an Indian character, or would he be would, just an adopted? I would. No, oh, he would. he would be an Indian character, and that just shows the range that I believe Tucci has. I, you know what? I mean, that well, it's obviously fair, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I could see him doing it. He could pull it off. Um, no, I think it'd be great. It'd be like, uh, it would be almost like Ben King- Kingsley, yes, as Gandhi, right? Yeah, sure. No, I, I, <laughs> I would love to see that. Tucci playing an <laughs> Indian character. I, however, yeah. I would go with a. Uh, a gr- I would go with a cameo type role. Okay. And I would have Tucci be the announcer, but be playing his character from Hunger Games, uh, Caesar Flickerman. Oh, that would be. I mean, Caesar Flick is that one of the greatest characters I've, I've ever seen? Dude, probably. he's so funny. Caesar Flickerman. He's so funny. He's, he, he kills it. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm interested in the Hunger Game like movies. Well, like, obviously they're sweet, like they're cool, but like, and there's the whole no, Jennifer that, Lawrence that really thing. Make, well, yeah, yeah, come. On. I think I think Joanna Mason's better looking. Mm, that's just me. I don't, I don't. Um, so okay. you know well, what? We can put that one up for debate. Yeah, I would love to. Who? Yeah, it's it's you know it's it I, sounds I, like a poll. I don't think it's. I don't think it is debatable. But everyone's way. Yeah. No. Whatever. Fine. Who's better well, looking? J Law. Who's better looking, Jennifer Lawrence or Joanna Mason? Yeah. I think it'll be a landslide, but okay. Um. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, definitely see this movie. It's a great movie. Definitely see it. Um. I think that's it. That just about does it. That that's. We're on a, we're on a short. We're on a short week this week. Yeah. We had short, a, short week. Who's, we're actually recording this on Monday, so you'll hear it uh, Thursday, normal normal scheduled time. But uh, yeah, I think this will that'll about do it. This is uh, we've got some we've got some things in the works. Our our silent producer uh, has been really pushing some good ideas on us that we're trying to uh, figure out what to do with. We're trying to bring to fruition. We have some really good guests coming this week, this month. Yeah, we do. Uh, so definitely stay tuned. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um I think I think we're good to go. 
Yeah, take us away with that song, dude. I mean, I didn't hear much music in this movie, so I don't know what. You're, what, what uh, kind of, there's a beast like, magical. There's a Beastie Boys song in it. Right. Yeah, there's a Beastie Boys there song. There sure in it. is. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take you out, and I'm gonna spell the word anti-disestablishmentarianism. It's A N T I D I S E S T A B L I S H M E N T A R I A N I S M. I swear to God, that's it. I know it by heart now. I, I wish I had it in front of me, but I'm gonna believe you. Uh, if he spelled it wrong, please call him out on our Facebook page. I didn't. I know. Uh, I've known it since fifth grade. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Suck it, nerds.